German heavy tanks from the Second World War have a rather different reputation. The King Tiger is known for being incredibly destructive with its huge armour, size and armament, and the mouse is deemed by many to have been a failed project. When the Second World War broke out, the Germans weren't really focusing on heavy tanks, more mobile vehicles that could carry out the Blitzkrieg effectively, but as time progressed, there was a need for heavier vehicles that could compete with some of the Allies and Soviets' tanks. There was a call to create a standardised set of tanks within the German military, and these were known as the E-Series. The Entwicklung series was an attempt to speed up the poor production rates and reliability with regards to mechanical issues, and within these were five different tanks of different weights and classes. There was one colossal variant within the E-Series that would have created an absolute incredible vehicle, a massive tank that was to rival the Mouse, and it was known as the E-100. So join us today as we look at the Mouse's little brother, the E-100, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. As the Allies encroached into Germany in the heart of the Third Reich, many regiments stumbled across armaments factories. In one particular factory, there was a rather interesting discovery made, with Allied soldiers discovering a colossal and huge potential vehicle. The tank they found would later be taken back to the UK for investigation and evaluation, however it's a real shame today that it was simply cut up and used for scrap, rather than to be held inside a museum. The E100 as it was known would have been a huge tank, around the weight class of 100 tonnes, and the projected vehicle would have been able to knock out any other vehicle of the Second World War with ease. What the Allied crews discovered was the tank half completed, and the sheer size of the E100 would have been immense. Although none were ever completed, it would have been around 11 metres long, and around 3 metres tall. The E100 would have been armoured rather well all the way around the vehicle, with 200mm hull armour angled at 60 degrees on the front, and the sides having 120mm vertical armour. It was intended to be a complete bastion on tracks, being able to withstand extremely heavy fire from enemies and also devastate them. The concept of the E100 started with Krupp's development of a previous vehicle, known as the Tiger Mouse. This was a 130 ton tank, made as a direct opponent of rival manufacturer Porsche's Mouse Tank. The Mouse today lives in infamy as one of Hitler's projected wonder weapons, and this itself would have been colossal, weighing in at 188 tons. Krupp's Tiger Mouse was lighter than the Mouse, and would have used components from pre-existing German vehicles, such as the Tiger II and the Panther. The Tiger Mouse's production could then, in theory, have been sped up by using these parts which already existed, and assembly would have been made much easier. Although the Tiger Mouse would have grossly outweighed the Panther and Tiger II, it was deemed that these components on board would have allowed the tank to function. The Tiger Mouse's chassis would eventually morph into the E100. The first documented evidence of a new 100-ton tank project surfaced in spring 1944, when inspections of a new wooden model of a vehicle took place. Now usually the tank armament industry in Germany was dominated by huge conglomerates such as Krupp, Porsche and Henschel, however it was a different company who would begin working on the E100. Adler, a small automobile company from Frankfurt in June 1943, had been working on making the E100. They had no real experience in making heavy tanks, which greatly frustrated Krupp, who had their own design outright rejected for the E100. So Adler had been given the contract to make the E100 without having any previous knowledge and experience really in building heavy tanks, but Krupp would also be involved in some of the hull manufacture. One of the greatest problems with developing the E100 based on the Tiger Mouse was in fact the turret which was on board, which weighed in at 45 tonnes itself. This turret, for size comparison, weighed more than a British Churchill tank, and one of the biggest criticisms of German heavy tanks is their mobility. The turret would have placed great strain on the vehicle, and although incredibly armoured, the cost to mobility would have been too great. So a new turret was conceived, which would have hoped to reduce the tank's weight, and this it would have fallen into the E100 category of a roughly 110 ton tank. The E100 would have been fitted with a colossal 128mm L55 cannon, which would have itself been capable of knocking out pretty much all of the Allied tanks, and would have caused great issue to them. There was a proposal though to upgun it to hold a 150mm cannon to cause even more devastation, and this gun would have been encased within the new adapted weight saving turret. 
The problem with building incredibly heavy tanks and large vehicles is how are you going to power them? Initially it was designed for an engine to be used which would have allowed the E100 to creep at a very slow 20 km an hour in ideal conditions, but then the engine was changed to use a 1200 horsepower Maybach HL234 engine. This would have greatly improved the power to weight ratio, allowing twice the speed of the previous engine to be achieved. The newer engine though would have forced designers to consider revising the appearance of the tank, but we don't really know how this would have looked like due to the fact that Adler burnt much of the evidence and designs of the vehicle as the war was coming to an end. In terms of how far the project actually went towards completion, it wasn't incredibly far. Initially delays hit the project, with some parts being sent to the wrong factory, but the running parts of the hull did come together. Transport tracks were made, but combat tracks weren't as time ran out, and final drives and steering systems were installed. So the work on the E100 was coming together, especially with the internal running components for the tank. The E100 would have been crewed by six men, who would have all needed to perform their roles for the tank to have been effective. German crews of heavy tanks during the latter stages of the conflict did have a habit of ditching their vehicles when they broke down, and the majority of times these mechanical issues were to do with mobility. It's a trend that really did plague German heavy tanks, poor reliability and mobility. The fact that Germans were planning to devise a 100 ton tank would have been impressive, but it most probably would have struggled in this sense, with its size also causing an issue. It would have possibly been needed to be transported by rail across long distances if this would have even been possible, and also would have struggled with bridges and muddy terrain. Another issue with the E-Series and the E-100 itself was the time in which it was being developed. Germany was suffering heavily from Allied bombing raids, with much of the armaments industry suffering from a crippling lack of supplies and materials. To develop new and incredibly heavy and material demanding tanks at this time was a rather last roll of the dice, especially as fuel was also in shortage. Its creation in a sense would have hindered German industry a lot more than it would have helped turn the tide of the war. As mentioned earlier, the prototype vehicle that was being constructed was then taken back to the UK for examination and was eventually cut up for scrap, which is a shame, as if we could see what was being produced today, we could really work out the complete scale and sheer size of the E100. The development of the tank was incredibly interesting, being a very complex vehicle, and should it have reached the battlefield, it would have been very terrifying. So overall, although an ambitious project, the E100 along with the E-Series was an idea that came too late to save Germany, and the pressures the country was facing, with its resources, greatly would have impacted the tank's creation. It would, if created though, have been an incredibly feared weapon of war, capable of doing extreme damage, but ultimately it remains a project lost to time in the scrapyard. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.